Hello YouTube, today I'm taking a look at Dovetail Games Flight Sim World here, and I got this because I purchased Flight School a year ago for $15, and then that allowed me access to the full retail version. Now it is currently in quote early access, and it will now retail for $24.95 on you know, your ad average typical day if you're not buying it during a sale or anything like that. And I have to say that at this point, I know they're using the term early access, so not optimized or any of that stuff. I have very few positive things to say about it at this point in time. It ran like molasses, and I don't have the most up-to-date supercomputer, but it's a Xenon E3 1245V2, 3.4 GHz quad-core processor, roughly equivalent to an i7-3770 series, and 16 gigs of error-correcting RAM may not be the fastest in the world, and a GTX 970. So while I don't have a supercomputer at the same time, I don't have a potato computer either. I have a decent enough rig, and it ran poorly. Now, I also had issues with OBS and Dovetail Games Flight Sim World in recording, and that could be some issues with uh, multi-monitor setup in OBS, so that's not exactly indicative of what's going on. Now, one of the very few positives that I really have to say about Flight Sim World is I really do like their overhauled user interface for the menu system. But that's about where my positivity for the product ends. Uh, I was going in to look at the aircraft, much more limited selection than Microsoft Flight Simulator X from 10 years ago. Only general aviation aircraft at this point. No real complex aircraft, no tube liners, no 737s or Lear jets or anything like that. The weather does not allow you to pick real world weather to be updated like every 15 minutes. You have to basically pick from uh, preset conditions. And then you have the route planner. Well, at first I really dug this flight planner. I really liked it. It was very approachable, very user-friendly until I went looking for familiar NDB, Vortac, Vor signals, uh, basically for instrument flying. And it didn't appear that those exist. So it's basically limited to VFR flying pretty much only, which I understand at this point in time, it's aimed at the general aviation sim market. But to me, that is very, very limited because even if you are a VFR pilot, it also helps to be able to use radio frequency navigational aids uh, just to kind of double check where you are in the real world. And maybe you are going to be prepping for, say, an instrument rating. If that's the case, you know, it would be very handy to have those things there. And this is where the recording is crap, and I apologize for that. I just don't have time to redo it. But I turned on the performance metrics, and I was getting single-digit frame rates. Once we kind of got out of the city with the auto-generated scenery, now they have included basically Orbix auto-generated scenery, which does look a lot nicer than the previous uh, Microsoft default uh, generated scenery. But... I was running at 8, 9, 10 frames a second at points, basically pot topping out at between 10 and 13 frames per second on high settings. And eventually I did go through and change and lower the settings to make the scenery I thought look more like, well, closer to default FSX Steam Edition right now. And the performance gain improvement that I saw is I went from 10, 11, 12 frames per second to 13, 14, 15 frames per second, which FSX right now, I typically run at between 30 and 50 frames a second uh, with 30 frames per second with more complex commercial aviation aircraft like the 727, uh, various other 737s, things of that nature, slowing down to about 20 frames per second with scenery heavy add-ons such as Manhattan X. So end of the story, if you're budget cons basically concerned about budget, go with FSX Steam Edition. A lot more third-party content out there, and that's the other thing. Older third-party content for FSX will not work with Dovetail Games Flight Sim World. It may or may not work with Prepared, which is the Lockheed Burton version of the FSX commercial version. Now, if you already have an extensive FSX library, I think that if you're looking for the next generation, Prepared is going to be the way to go. 
If you're looking for a flight sim to get involved with at a kind of a ground level, I think X-Plane 11 is the much better option at this point. And if you're a very budget-minded con consumer, get FSX Steam Edition. It's a better product than this is at this time. Maybe they'll improve it once it gets out of early access, but as it stands right now, I, I can't recommend this at all. It is a do not buy. Get Steam Edition or X-Plane 11.